General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, and Wheaties, breakfast of champions, presents The Lone Ranger. Horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! When Bill's that fast, the kids all shout, you can't strike that slugger out. He gets a hit because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. That's Cheerios, the cereal shaped like little letter O's. And those O's stand for oats, the good grain Cheerios is made from. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, those good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. You can see that Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So make sure you have a Cheerios breakfast every day. Then, you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode the trail outside of the town of Dove Creek. Suddenly... Into the woods, Tonto, quickly. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. Oh, oh, easy, oh, easy, easy, Scott. Easy, Scott. Shot come from behind Boulder the head. Yes. Fire a shot or two in that direction to cover me, Toto. I'll go through the woods and try to surprise him. Ah. Hidden by the heavy brush, the Lone Ranger cautiously made his way forward until he was opposite the boulders. Seeing a figure crouched behind them, he called out, Reach you and don't move. Oh, wait, don't shoot. I'll drop my gun. Oh, a boy... How old are you? Nineteen. Who's with you? No one. I saw you wearing that mask coming along the trail with an Indian. I knew you were the man who led the attack in our wagons this morning. I I suppose you'll kill me like you did my older brother and the other men. Oh, I'm not going to hurt you. I don't understand what you say about attacking your wagons this morning. You understand, all right. I saw you. A tall man wearing a mask leading Indians to attack our four wagons. I'm the only one who escaped. Well, if you're going to kill me, get it over with. Hold on, hold on, son. Someone else led that attack, not I. Believe me, I'm not an outlaw, and I don't intend to harm you. What's your name? Gary Biggs. Gary, I want to help you. My Indian friend is waiting back there. Will you come with me and tell us everything that happened this morning? Well, I... I'll holster my gun. Pick up yours, Gary. Then we'll go meet Toto and talk things over. <laughs> The Lone Ranger and Gary joined Tonto. Then they camped in a clearing nearby. When the youth finally realized the masked man and Indian were not going to harm him, he talked freely. I was coming west with my older brother, Frank. He was in charge of the four wagons. Yes? Just after dawn this morning, I I was riding behind the wagons when Indians, led by a masked man on a white horse, came over a rise, yelling and shooting. I see. I, 
I jumped from my horse and ran into a grove where I hid in a thick brush. And the fight ended. My brother and the others were dead. Wagons burned. Oh, I'm sorry. Indians took the horses, all except mine. I found him back in the woods. And Gary, we're terribly sorry about what happened. If you'll trust us, we'll take care of you for a while. But I'm all mixed up. You wear a mask and ride a white horse. Now listen, I... Gary. Tonto and I came to this territory hoping to find a notorious outlaw named Carl Keel. He's a German and speaks with an accent. Oh, say, I remember hearing him shouting orders. And he did talk strange-like. Oh, he's sure that Keel, King Masabi. Then say him wear a mask, ride white horse. Oh, yes, Toto. Gary, while you have food and get some needed rest, Tonto and I'll ride to where the attack took place. Perhaps we'll be able to pick up Keel's trail from there. After Gary had eaten and had been made comfortable in a lean-to, the Lone Ranger and Tonto left the camp and followed Gary's back trail toward the scene of the attack. As they rode over a rise, Tonto pointed and spoke. Look, Kimasabi, many men dig a near-burned wagon. Those are those oh, 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 oh. Must be men from nearby ranches making graves for the victims of the attack. Ah, but them spoiled trail left by ones who attack wagons. Yes. Well, we'll leave before we're seen. Come on, Silver. Get him out the skull. Otto, we'll return to camp and see how Gary is. Perhaps this afternoon you might hear some news of Keel and Dove Creek. Huh? Take Gary with you and have him report the attack to the sheriff. Ah. All right, let's hurry. Come on, Silver. Get him out the skull. That afternoon, Tonto and Gary Biggs rode to town to the sheriff's office, where Gary told of the attack. The next day, in a secluded cabin a few miles back in the hills, Carl Keel looked up as a fierce-looking Indian entered. Mm. Well, Tugo, you bring news, perhaps? Uh, me scout many miles east. See, other wagon train coming west. It may be reach plain where trail cross in morning. Oh, <laughs> Ah, that is good, Tobo, very good. It was a smart idea to join your gang of ten renegade braves with my eight men. <laughs> Neither group alone was strong enough to attack the wagons. Oh. It was also smart to have my men disguise themselves as Indians. It's more confusing and terrifying to the pioneers we attack. He'll give the wagon train you saw a warm welcome, to go. Braves, be ready. You give horses and guns... Like before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your Indians get all the horses and guns, and my men and I are to take whatever else they is worth taking. Ah. My, uh, my men are already at your camp, so tell him we attack in the morning. And later you and I'll meet here and make definite plans. That morning, the Lone Ranger and Tonto again tried to find Keel's trail. Gary Biggs, who stayed at the camp to rest, decided to take a ride. He rode into the hills and finally stopped on a ridge overlooking a small valley where the Indians were camped. Hold there, hold, hold there. Easy. Dog gone. An Indian camp in that valley. Maybe they're the ones who attacked our wagons. The youth crouched behind the brush as he paused to survey the camp below. Suddenly... Oh, not move. What? Me have knife at back. Hey, that knife, take it away. Why, you spy on Brave? Oh, I'm not spying. That's I... not good. You get on horse. Come with Tugo. Now, wait a minute. Me say get on horse. All right, don't use that knife. Easy. Uh, look, I wasn't spying. I you just saw... You not talk. Me take it to pale face boss, man. <laughs> get him. Get him. Soon, Gary and Tugo reached Keel's cabin. The Indian shoved the youth ahead of him, saying... You go in the cabin. Tugo, who is this you bring here? Him spy on Indian camp in Valley. Oh. Tie him up. After we find out who sent him to spy on the Indian camp, you'll get rid of him. Tugo tied Gary securely. Then Carl questioned him carefully and at great length. Gary, fearing for his life, told of events up to the time Tugo had surprised him on the ridge. 
Finally, Carl turned to Tugo, saying, He tells of staying in camp with two men. A masked man and an Indian who are searching for me, Tugo. Me not savage. No, but I do. The men he speaks of have looked for me before. And because of them, my friend, I left the Pecos territory. It's not good then so close. You're man. right. The masked one is the Lone Ranger. Me hear of masked one, all right. Big white stallion. Him plenty bad medicine. Yeah. <laughs> but he and his friend, the Indian, will stop a bullet like any other man. Perhaps it will be better if we get to them before they find us. We'll leave this young man here and go to the place on the ridge where you found him. Why we go there? To follow his trail back to the masked man's camp. They will not be expecting us to hunt for them to go. So we'll have the chance to shoot them from ambush. <laughs> When the Lone Ranger and Toto returned to their camp, they found that the youth had left. Who's the scout? Oh, 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 fella. Big easy scout, easy fella. Gary's horse gone, Kimasabi. And him not lean to. A young man his age gets restless, Toto. He must have gone for a ride. Uh, him come back soon, maybe. Gary's been through a lot for one so young. <laughs> Silver's warning us of danger. Uh huh. Him look to woods to right. We'll act as though nothing's wrong. Walk with me toward those boulders over there. Uh, the masked man and Indian walked nonchalantly toward the boulders. Then as they suddenly sprang behind them... Still, his warning saved us from being ambushed. We'll return the fire. I think there are two of them. Yes. Them right away through wood. We'll follow them. Come on. Easy, 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 brother. Easy, 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 easy. Carl Keel and Tugo rode through the woods and over a hill to the main trail. Later, as they turned onto a branch trail, Tugo spoke. You think them follow us? Yeah, we must stay well ahead of them, Tugo. We'll go to the Indian camp in the valley. Then, if the masked man and his friend appear, they'll ride into trouble. Get up there! Come on! We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Old he can capture outlaws cause he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Sure, Cheerios, the cereal that's fun to eat because it's shaped like little letter O's. The only ready-to-eat oat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. And listen, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So every morning... Get going and keep going with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. As the Lone Ranger and Toto reach the main trail... They saw the two outlaws turn onto a branch trail and disappear over a rise. At that moment, the masked man and Indian saw the sheriff and posse approaching. They stopped. And after the Lone Ranger identified himself, told about Keel and Tugo. Then, joined by the posse, they continued after the two men. The delaying of the Lone Ranger and Toto allowed Carl and Hugo to reach the valley and arouse the Indians. After telling them to capture and torture the two men who might be following him and Tugo, Carl spoke to Tugo. Tugo, I'll stay here while you go bring the young man from my cabin. Why you want a young brave here? I want him to watch while his masked friend and the Indian burn at the stake. Uh, then him burn his sacrifice to Thunderbird Spirit. Hey, Tugo, by the time you get back, 
We'll have the masked man and his Indian friend as captives. The Lone Ranger and the posse followed the tracks left by the horses of the German and the renegade. As they neared the entrance to the valley, Toto signaled a halt. Oh, scout. Oh, scout. Oh, scout. Oh. Yes. That plenty of sign of Indian near. Oh, I've noticed, Toto. Indians, eh? Yeah. What'll we do? We'll have Toto scout ahead before we go any further. Mm, that good idea. He just got easy for that. We go on foot. Not be long. Toto disappeared into the sagebrush like a shadow. In about ten minutes, he returned. Here comes Toto now. Yes. It heat good, me go on ahead of posse. What did you find out? Braves and war paint camped in small valley ahead. What? We not see any squaws or dogs. That means it's a war party. Ah, they're about 20 brave. They must be the Indians Keel led in the wagon attack. No doubt about it. We got 18 men. If we can take those renegades by surprise... I'm sure we can, Sheriff. Deputy. Yes, Sheriff. Take half the men and follow Toronto along the ridge to the other end of the valley. Then move him that way. All right, Chief. Stay there till you get a signal of three shots in quick succession. Right. Otto, you and the deputy keep a sharp lookout. If you're discovered, you give us the signal. Then ride into the valley from the far end, shooting. We'll wait here and keep them from escaping at this end of the valley. Ah. Let's go, Tano. Easy, Scout. Easy, fellow. Get him up. Scout. Get him up. At the Indian camp, Carl waited in one of the wigwams and watched through the opening as the Braves mounted Mustangs and rode toward the valley entrance, through which the Lone Ranger and Tonto were expected to approach. <laughs> that masked man and his Indian friend will get a reception they didn't expect. I'm sure they'll follow our trail to this camp. Carl was suddenly startled when... But... The shots were followed by the yipping of the posse men as they rode into the valley from both ends. Stepping quickly from the wigwam, Carl took in the situation at a glance. Uh, the Indians are trapped. The masked man has brought others with him. I'll try to escape up the slope. Carl ran around the wigwam to his horse. Get up there. Come on. Carl headed toward the steep slope at the side of the valley, hoping to escape during the excitement. But the Lone Ranger saw him, and leading Tonto and the posse to subdue the renegades, he started after Keel. Come on, Silver! After Carl reached the brush covered slope, he turned and looked back. The masked man is after me. Carl's aim was affected by his panic and by the movements of his horse, and his bullets went wild. The Lone Ranger, aware of the situation, withheld his fire and bent low over his great stallion's neck as he urged him onward. Faster, big fellow! Faster! As Silver increased his speed, the fleeing outlaw once more turned and fired. This gun must be empty now. Come on, Silver! The gap that separated the Lone Ranger from Carl steadily closed. Then Silver moved alongside the outlaw's horse, and with a mighty lunge, the Lone Ranger sprang toward Carl. Get off that horse! No! <laughs> He dragged the outlaw from the saddle. Both men were well built and muscular, and as they struck the ground, Carl landed on top, momentarily having the advantage. He raised his empty gun over his head. This, my friend, will break your skull. Drop back! The Lone Ranger grabbed Carl's upraised arm, and the veins stood out for a moment on the necks and arms of both men as they struggled. No! With a sudden lunge, the Lone Ranger rolled on top of Carl and pinned the German's strong arms to the ground. For a moment, he stared down into Carl's hate-filled eyes. Then the masked man suddenly loosened his grip on one arm and swung a heavy blow to the outlaw's jaw. This should do it! Get to your feet! Pulling the stunned outlaw to his feet. The Lone Ranger quickly used his lariat to tie Carl securely. Uh, I will hold you, Keel. The posse has subdued your Indian friends. I'll take you down there and turn you over to the sheriff. With Silver walking behind him, the masked man approached the posse with his prisoner, and the men greeted him with enthusiasm. Easy, Silver, easy. Sheriff, this is Carl Keel. Well, Fender, I'm sure glad you got him. I saw you fighting up on the slope, and I was a little worried. Well, you'll not have to worry, Sheriff. <laughs> so I see. Now, Kimasabi. Yes. Me learn from Brave that Indian named Tugo go to bring Gary here. Me find out Keel Indian catch Gary this morning. Take him to Keel's hideout. How do you know he's Gary? Keel tell Indians him capture young fellow who escaped from wagon attack. Then it must be Gary they captured him. Ah. Keel, where is that hideout? Speak up, where is it? Ah. A mile to the south on the branch trail. Sheriff, Toto now go find that Indian Tugo and Gary Biggs. 
We'll meet you at the junction of the main trail and the branch trail, where we turned off to come here. All right, mister. I'll see you later. Come on, sir. Come on, Half an hour later, the sheriff and the posse men heard hooves approaching the junction where they were waiting. Hey, Sheriff, here comes the masked man and his Indian friend. Yep. By golly, they have the young man and an Indian with him. Who's it? Oh, 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 oh. Sheriff, this is the Indian Tugo who rode with Carl Keel. We met him heading for the valley with Gary Big. Did you have any trouble? Uh, Tugo saw him coming. He was fixing the fire. When the masked man shot the gun right out of his hand. Are you all right, young fella? Oh, yes, Sheriff. They plan to kill me for telling about the attack. Kills a mean hombre, sir. By the way, Mr. Hayden, after you and Tonto left, we found out something interesting. Oh, what, Sheriff? Eight of those prisoners aren't Indians at all. They're white men disguised as redskins. Must have been the members of Keel's gang. Yes, and that explains something that puzzled me. I couldn't figure out why a band of Indians would need Keel to lead them in the attacks on the wagons. The fact that Keel's men are with them clears up that point. Without them to help, the Indians didn't have enough men to risk an attack. That's about the size of it, mister. Keel and his men will hang for the killings. Tugo and his braves will be punished by the army. Baby, we young fella. What do you intend to do from now on? Ride with the mass man in tunnel? I'll answer that, Sheriff. Gary wants to stay in Dove Creek if he finds a home. But, well, in that case, he can live with me and my wife. We'll be glad to have him. <laughs> I'll teach him to be a good lawman, eh? Oh, I'd sure like that, Sheriff. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Sheriff, I'm sure you and your men can handle things now. Tonto and I will stop at the Army Post and request that they send troopers to get those renegade Indians. Good. Those redskins are through making trouble around here. Adios, Sheriff. Adios, everybody. Adios, Adios Sheriff. We'll stop to see you now and then, Gary. Let's go, Tonto. Come on, Silver! Come on, Scout! We'll get him. There they go. But they won't forget you, I'm sure of that. They're the finest men I ever met, Sheriff. Believe me, I'll never forget the Lone Ranger. We'll return in just a moment for a word about our next exciting Lone Ranger adventure, Dead Man. Here's big news. Now you can get auto emblem models free of extra cost with Wheaties. You know auto emblems are the handsome insignia or nameplates that identify one automobile from another. Some automobiles have their emblems on the horn button, others on the trunk of the car, or up front by the grill. Wheaties emblems are beautiful steel models of these actual auto emblems. Each emblem is a little bigger around than a donut. The brilliantly colored design is raised, not just painted on, and it won't break. It's made of solid steel. Eight different emblems are offered free with Wheaties, one to a package. There's Nash, Packard, Studebaker, Hudson, DeSoto, Chrysler, Plymouth, and Dodge. Here's how you get them. At your grocers, look for special Wheaties packages that picture an auto emblem on the front. The picture tells you what emblem is inside. The emblem inside is yours free of extra cost with a special Wheaties package. Hurry to your grocers now. Get your Wheaties auto emblems while supplies last. <laughs> To save Tonto's life, the Lone Ranger raced against time and a gang of killers, determined to murder the Indian and the masked champion of justice. Be sure to listen. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. Tonight's drama was written by Dan Beatty. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network. <laughs>